truckstop.com live low board episode nine 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 you see i even got the microphone a little bit closer so we should have even better volume than ever before yep how's everybody doing hope everybody's doing well things are starting to get warmer outside i like that i like to see the sun and i like to see the colors in the in the grass and in the trees and the birds starting to come out that makes me pretty happy what about y'all because we all know trucking in the winter time is some pretty serious stuff uh especially in uh the western parts of the country or the northern parts of the country so let me get into this today it's two, oh excuse me thursday i was about to say two so today is two the second month february 4th 2021 Thursday so this is the first Thursday of February we'll go take a look around see what's going on yep <clears throat> yeah today has been an interesting week fun week all right, let's see here. Um, Oklahoma City, let's do a new place here. Let's do uh, Indianapolis. Indian app. Indianapolis, Indiana. I'll take this down to 150 miles because, actually I'll do 175, but I'm pretty confident in Indianapolis with a flatbed I'll do well within 150, 175. There should not be any real reason to go much further out than that on the radius. Episode 9. So yeah, since last episode, uh, my store became open. My store is officially open now um, where it's completely automated and you can go in and um, purchase my book, the one that I wrote. Over 300 pages. And when I say over 300 pages... That was over 300 pages in Microsoft Word. Like, chapter one is, um, what, 81 pages? In the PDF format, the one that is in my store. That's 81 pages, and that's only one chapter out of 30. So, really, I haven't counted them up yet. So, if somebody wants to count them up and let me know, I'll do it. Unless I have a little bit more free time. Uh, but the... Uh, the page count for what's on uh, my book on the store is probably more like 500 pages. That's what I'm thinking. About like 500, 500 pages. Pew, 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 pew. Maybe even more than that. Because I think just this... See, let, let, let's pull it up real quick. Because just the... Uh... Yeah, it's on my desktop. Let me see. Will this record my desktop too? No. Oh, it's not going to pull it up. Actually, I might pull it up here. Let me see here. I'm, once I pull up the PDF file, because one chapter I have is um, how I book my freight, chapter 17. And I think this is another one. Look at this. Yeah, this is another one, 108 pages. You can see it in, in the top left up there. But it's 108 pages alone. So when I say um, over 300 pages, that's over 300 pages in Microsoft Word. See, that's pulled for one of, one of my episodes that I did the cover on. Chapter 17, How I Booked My Freight. So it's really, you get like a, a more detailed truckstop.com episode in this chapter. So in the beginning, I give definitions just to get familiar with like freight lane. And I give definitions of what they mean, but also what it means to me uh, and how I've um, cataloged these, these terms and the way I use them in my mind. Because these are all facts. But it's just all about finding out about what facts work for your operation. And once you figure out what you want and what's good for your operation, then really the other things become irrelevant. Like you can still be mindful of it and be aware of it, but it's really like it's nothing to really hold on to too closely or other people's opinion of it. Uh, because if you have a system in place that's profitable and it works and it's proven and it's tested and it works over and over and over again, then certain things won't be relevant to uh, to your operation and that's okay um i think sometimes we get stuck in the mentality or, or or it's common mentality to think that we all there's there's only one way to do something and we all have to do it according to the book um or according to 
the definition set in place and for an extent and to it to an extent yeah uh, you do and that's what it's there for as as a standard but standards you know great people have always um, they would use the standard as a starting point and then they would go from the standard and just build their own thing around it like some of the great inventors um, uh, throughout time and just anybody who they ever really called a genius uh, they would just they would say okay I see all this what you're saying but I don't need this I don't need that I don't need that like right here gross rate all in whenever you hear a broker say all in this just means the total revenue of a load right because somebody really might not know that's what all in means it's just the gross rate the all in rate the all in rate uh, I must have I, was, I should have put is if you're reading that it's supposed to say is uh, I wrote a lot I'm still working on as time goes because I've already proofread yeah it's, it's a lot the all-in rate is the total gross the gross is what the load pays before fuel factoring quick pay cost and etc the total gross and all-in is the same thing so you see how I'm bringing the word gross and all-in just you know making the terms you know around but it's like that's what these people did <clears throat> different people have done throughout time so I guess that's what I'm saying just um, just just challenge yourself to pay attention to the things that really only pertain to what you want then as you do that you start really becoming that thing and you start getting so good at it and you just whoosh, everything that's irrelevant just spins right on out of your operation and you just focus on building it right so um, yeah eight pages so the point I came in here the first time so when you got more definitions dead areas um, but yeah there's a ton of pages there's more than 300 pages see it's up to you to develop your own style that works and that is profitable I will share with you exactly how I do it from the way I look at it and use the low board all the way down from exact negotiation tactics I use I can't promise you the same results as me but I can promise you these are the exact tactics I use consistently to clear 3,000, 4,000, and 5,000 a week after fuel. Once you get the knowledge and the practice, what separates you from your competition is your initiative, your willingness to outwork them, and your customer service. Focus on these three aspects as you continue to sharpen your conversation skills with your customers, otherwise known as brokers, unless you're going direct. Don't view them as brokers per se. These are your customers. It's a business, right? Um, they are just a little more sharky than your average customer, right? You know, they're doing their thing. That's their business too. The brokers are. It's like, really, it's like two, two, two contractors just contracting with each other. Two companies doing a um doing a deal with each other. This is uh this is a business. Don't get caught in the mentality of the big old bad broker taking all of our money. All right? We know what that is. That will kill your morale quick. Sure can. And your broker customers will smell the blood and eat you up. Right? Who cares what the broker gets if you get what you want and what you need? And what I mean by this is they'll smell your blood. Like, especially as a new, uh, with, your own, with your own authority or new company, it's easy to kind of get the morale beat down, especially if you didn't come into it with more than like $30,000. So if you're down in that ten to thirty thousand dollar range, it can be pretty, um, you know, morale killing when you uh, are just, especially if you're hauling like a van trailer. Because like with flatbed, I think it's a little bit easier to get better rates. But if you're hauling a van trailer, and yeah, it can be a little uh, disheartening. Seriously, probably in the beginning, um, especially if you're down in like ten, twenty thousand, like. 25,000 and up, maybe not so bad, 30,000 up. But cuz at about 25, 30,000 up, you can afford to like slow down and make better deals. So you can afford for more um broker customers to say no. Because some days I just don't even make a deal and I don't even really care. Like, yeah, I wanted to make a deal that day, but I didn't make a deal. There wasn't a deal that I made that, uh, there wasn't a deal that I liked. But if I was having running my own our own authority with only ten thousand dollars, then I don't really have that I don't really have that privilege yet. Now I could take that risk, but I don't really have that privilege because I haven't created that privilege yet. 
And so if you're just running, 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 you know, which is understandable, but if your morale starts to get low because now you're taking these loads for cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, now you're taking them for a dollar fifty, now you're taking them for a dollar thirty, now you're looking to do power only for like a small rate because they have a trailer, and, and now it, it's just a race to the bottom. And um, well, especially if you are settling for less over and over and over again, right? You know, if you're settling for less over and over and over again, that's that, that's a race to the bottom. But what's 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 going on here with this part, right? Um, they will s smell your blood and eat you up. Because brokers do this; they they do phone calls every day, make deals every day, both ways, from their customers to us getting it fulfilled. And they're just they're good. A lot of these brokers are really good at what they do. They they answer a ton of phone calls. They got a great personality. They they make their customers feel happy. They know how to use all the logistics software. You know, it's actually pretty respectable uh, in, 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 in certain ways, right? Uh, but the uh, thing about that is just like we will be able to drive a truck way better than the broker. We will be able to fix a truck way better than a broker. We, we know compliance about trucking probably way better than a broker. But one thing a broker is probably going to be able to do way better than most of us is... Um, talk on the phone talk on the phone and get what they want that's all it is so you can call it negotiations you can call it deal making I call it deal making but really that's what it's all about two adults talking on the phone getting what they want and whoever wants what they want the most is pretty much who's going to get it and um, but we know that you really can't you shouldn't be trying to win every one of those things with a battle you know so it's about getting clever and smart and witty and comfortable in who you are and what you want where you do it with a smile on your face with, with enthusiasm like, like I talk about in my book a lot about enthusiasm because it's just too, it, it's, it's very simple almost every business deal is very simple like even my book right here right in my store it's very simple it's just a book and it's twenty seven dollars it's simple. It's just a simple book. Uh, it's a simple deal. Uh, $27 for a book that has a ton of information in it. But it's the same thing with what we're doing with brokers. Right? It's just two, two adults who are talking to each other, deciding how they're going to get what they want. Then the better you start getting at understanding that concept, then you start to make concessions so, you know, and both sides make concessions. So both people, so you can get what you want while this person gets what they want. Those are the deals I, I like to make. You know, I, I, li I like to make both people win. It just, make, it just makes a better, um, I think a better um, energy for me. Because, yeah, I can make a little bit more by like just being super sharky. But it's all right. There, there's there's my times and moments where, where I do my real shark, not not real sharky stuff, but where I'm really just put my foot down and just like it can be a little outrageous on certain deals. But um, but for the most part, you know, I like I like to make I like to make good deals, and a good deal to me is like that. I get what I want, maybe give you a little concession to get what you want, but you respect what I want, so I'm getting what I want. But anyways. When they smell blood, for the third time, I'm explaining it again. My bad. That's that's me uh, doing circles around it. Uh, ding, ding, ding. Episode number nine. Uh, getting warmed up in here. The uh, the blood part is what. Um, so it's just yeah, because it's happened to me before. It's happened to me in, in you know. It's one of those things where it's like this. You've called 10 brokers, 20 brokers, and you're just getting crazy offers, uh, low offers. You call on this low, you maybe don't even want to hardly do it because it's 40,000 pounds or 45,000 pounds. It goes through the mountains, and they tell you a rate, and you do the math on it. You're like, that's like a dollar thirty a mile. You're like, no, I'm not even, I don't even, I don't even want to start a dollar thirty negotiation. I'll tell you really quickly a number that starts with two dollars a mile, and I'll say my offer is good for five minutes, and goodbye. Um, 
so because yeah so maybe you start to get morale deplenished deplenished of morale right but the broker who does this and is good at talking on the phone making a deal getting what they want they're gonna be like ooh this is gonna be easy to get what I want because this truck driver is mad this truck driver is broke right this truck driver is I almost felt weird saying broke but they I'm thinking like I'm, I'm like in, inside their head that's what they're thinking too I bet because they're like man you guys never pay enough and man how am I going to afford my tires and all this when whenever a truck driver starts putting that on one broker especially a broker that they don't know that's a good indication that that truck driver is or that owner operator yeah it's just no we don't need to we we, we no it's not in my opinion and in my book it's not a healthy way to think is to blame it all on the brokers because once you start blaming on brokers and once you start getting in that mentality you actually give them the power yeah you give them the power and they sense the blood on you that's all that's going on they know they're in position and they have plenty of trucks that'll take the load and they, they see that the blood that's on you if you say like you know how how am I supposed to make a living like this or how am I supposed to do this once they sense that emotion and the anger that's the blood boom they got you they're like all right well uh yep that's what it's for thousand uh thousand dollars to go two thousand um uh, uh what does it say though a thousand dollars to go nine hundred miles you're like uh, because they smelt the blood on you they're not gonna take you serious but if you were to come in like I said on that on that better on that better vibration where you are uh, having privilege that you created to turn down whatever deal you don't like. So they sense this. The broker's like, wow, this truck driver's got his stuff together, right? He's like, hey, he's, he's really a trucking company. And then you come in, hey, enthusiasm, right? Everything's fine. It's just business. I want to see if we can make a deal. Let me see what you what you have, and I'll tell you what I have and what I could do. You tell me what you could do, what you could have, and we'll either agree or agree to disagree. That's it. It doesn't have to be anything more than that of an experience. It doesn't have to be emotional. It doesn't have to be anger. It doesn't have to be um, feeling like you're, you're 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 dealing with the thief. Because at the end of the day, they could be they could be thinking the same thing about us that we're the thief. Because like, they look at it like, oh, you guys made $3,500 on this low, but maybe not fully thinking of our true responsibilities of how much money that we have that gets tied up into the business. You know, via insurance, via um, maintenance, via fuel, via compliance, which is in the form of other different things if you have your own authority, UCR, 2290 if you're leased and, use, and if you're independent. So it's like, so why not just cut all that out, right? Hold on, let me pull the camera up. So why don't we just cut all that out? That's what I do. Move a little bit slower. Get everybody on the phone. And we talk. That's it. We just talk. And I say what I want. That's what I suggest. Just say what you want. It's okay to want stuff. And you either make a deal or you don't. Right, how long have I been recording? Oh, geez, 18 minutes. Should we even go to the low board today? See, I'm setting this light up. I'm going to go ahead and buy one of those little lights. One of those little, um, like those, like, selfie, with it, uh, like the influencer type lights. Just so I can put it right here on my desk. I got one of my other lights that I use for camera and photography. But it's, you know, it's not really a, it. It's not doing what I want it to do. I want to light more in front of me that's not very bright, but it's bright enough to light me up well because I'm using the laptop camera, my laptop camera to do this. But I need to close this episode up pretty soon anyways because last night uh, somebody drove into my wife's uh, truck. Mm-hmm. Drove into my wife's truck, her nice F-150 that was completely paid for. She paid for it with cash. Yeah, her own truck just whoosh, and they took it from her. So today, I'm gonna go out with her and we're gonna go to a State Farm. We're gonna go talk to the insurance, see what they see what they think about everything. 
because one thing's for sure she needs definitely her money she needs her, she needs her uh seven thousand dollars back for that truck or whatever it was that she paid for it i think it was that so but really she she was really shook up you know her, she was in she's fine you know but she, she was shook up because you know smoke went inside the car the person turned in front of her luckily a fire fighter somebody in the fire department was there at the intersection and saw the whole thing so guess who wrote the statement for the uh for the for the city police uh the fireman did and she's not at fault so she's really she you know she got shook up pretty good and now she's not at work today yeah which uh she's pretty much needed at work every day what she does and she's actually she actually does something related to the trucking business too but um so yeah go talk to them at State Farm, see what's up. Go over there to the uh, to the tow yard we know in town and go check it out, cause it's probably totaled. And so, see maybe about what see see. I just want to see what State Farm has to offer, and if it's if it's a if it's a deal, well, a deal, but might end up just get one of those pro bono lawyers involved and see what type of case they think it is. Because it's one of those things like, you know, when people say like emotional damage and stuff like that, like it, stuff like this affects people in different ways. And maybe, you know, I used to think that people were just scamming when they did that. But uh, when I was younger, but now as an adult, I could see that, that yeah, it, the situation happened. So maybe it's not even really holding the person that wrecked into her accountable, but it's holding the situation accountable. It's like, okay, this situation really happened. She had her truck is now total. She had to sit out there in the cold. She had to wait to get picked up. She had to deal with police. She's not at work. And she had to deal with the smoke in the truck and getting hit. So that was a real experience. It really happened. And, and that's what it's that's what I, that's what I'm saying about it is it's, it's holding the situation accountable more. So see that's why I need I need to sit back here or something, huh? Uh, holding the situation accountable because you know that's just unfortunate especially for somebody like my wife she, she's a good person you know she's a good person she 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 doesn't she doesn't do nothing bad to nobody she's a good person you know so she's just minding her business working hard doing 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 what she does well boom she was just coming home we're about to cook dinner yep so I think that but do you see what I'm saying do you agree let me know in the comments. Do you agree? I think that's I think that's worth more than just a check to get get the truck back, and and and, and definitely no. We're not settling on um, here's four or five thousand dollars what your truck is valued at. So I don't know uh, how, how it's gonna go, but I think with the emotional, I think with the other type of trauma that's involved and everything else that happened, I think I think this is something that's probably should. We'll see. So that's what that's what that's what's next. I got to start with State Farm. See, that's the way my mind works. I, I, I start I start at the finish line. I'm like, okay, look, we'll go to Creed and Creed and take this thing all the way to the finish line if we have to. But let me just see what's now. Let me work my way there. <laughs> let, me, let me let me go start with step one. I go go to the state uh not state police but to the uh State Farm. All right. So do let's do look at a couple loads. Uh, 23 minutes in. So we'll, let's let's do about five minutes worth of loads. But yeah, but see the original point that I was making. I hope you see is that see we're still going Str strategically position yourself there's a hundred pages just in this one chapter so really it's a lot more than 300 pages because you know the words I make the words a little bit bigger so you can read them on the phone and on the tablet better and do some designing where it makes it more fun to read and it's, it's, so it doesn't feel like a chore so you like you can go from the left to the middle to the right and the colors and the pictures and so it makes it more uh, interactive See, like this, I put reload areas into five basic categories. Very good, good, decent, bad, very bad. I'll give you an example, an example city of reload area for the type of freight haul. You see, I like to do stuff like this just to make it really clear to understand because if it's all just jumbled up as words, it's going to be so much harder to remember it all. See, like very good, Chicago, good, Cincinnati, decent, Dallas, bad, Hartford, Connecticut, very bad. Something like Rollins, Wyoming. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is 100 pages, so just know that. Uh, you know, when you come visit the store, 
uh, when I say 300 pages, it's probably more like 500 pages. I need to count them up and redo my advertising. So, what was the other thing I was about to say about that? Uh, but it would be. I don't know. Must not be important at the moment. Uh, oh yeah, and I even got these negotiations too. These are pretty cool. These are very cool, actually. I got. I, I give like five different types of examples, in exactly how what I would say and how the situation would go. We can though post the rate, asking for more. Yep. So let me get into the truck stop. There was something there. There was other. There's another announcement. What was I saying on YouTube? Oh yeah, I'll be I'll be building my next store too, um, because my store that's up right now, that's like my kiosk. That's my kiosk or like my lemonade stand or that's my store in downtown or like that's my coffee place. You know, like those little coffee places where you just pull up in the car real quick and keep going. So, but maybe the coffee place has a bigger coffee shop in town where you can just walk around and sit down. So right now, my trucking trade com is like the drive through version. So you drive through, come and get it fast. But uh, my next door, which is andrewsmethod.com, it will be a slow store. So you just see different products. You're not like pressured to buy anything. You just look and read it and, you know, a lot of the um, sales pitching slows down and it's just more of a casual store and there's different things and um, clothing, merch. Um, so just know that too, since I have 500 people here. Okay, 502 people here on YouTube now. And I appreciate all you guys from clicking in and hanging around. Hanging around and going all the way up in this world with me. And now I got something cool to give, right? Get all this for twenty-seven bucks. That's nice. Um, so that's so my so just so y'all know who's been following me for a while too. That I I am going to develop a um, a slower store. Um, especially now that this one's up and up and up and up and going well and processing transactions. Um, but the store that's up right now is the drive-through version. It's a little bit more fast, so when people come and visit for the first time who's who's never met me before it's a first hand a, a, a first impression uh, it's like okay I see what's going on and it's a faster store so you can so I can get you into re, um, seeing what I have in my store uh, more effectively because if I were just to post a book it'd be like oh that's cool yeah but once I show you in this fashion on the quick store it's just quick to business like point number one point number two point number three point number four and this is what it is um, and I think that's good for first impressions Cincinnati to Laredo where to go Tennessee steel haulers 234 a mile $3,200 that's not too bad actually except for it's 44,000 pounds I don't ever get too spooked out about Laredo even though it's not that great for flatbed. But maybe it's because I'm in Louisiana and Texas is close enough. And I'm just like, all right, I'd rather be stuck in Texas than be stuck in like, uh, even in like upstate New York or something. I'd rather be in Laredo, Texas than be in like way, way, way in upstate New York somewhere or, yeah. Or even in like even like a Binghampton or something. <clears throat> Maybe Binghampton Binghampton is not so bad because you can go down into like uh, Scranton and uh, into in, into a couple other different directions. But I don't know. Maybe it's just I like Texas as a kid. And when, when I first started, because I think I first started coming to Texas as a truck driver, probably about twenty one years old. And I just always liked Texas. There was something about Texas I just liked being there. You got this one for Buchanan hauling and rigging. Buchanan hauling and rigging. It's a good company. I like them. 328 a mile, 3600. St. Petersburg, Florida. Which one's St. Petersburg? What is that, Tampa? 
I need to go down there more too. Do 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 do. I was just reading a text message. Uh huh. All right. Uh, the Saint Petersburg. Saint Petersburg, Russia. Yep, Tampa. That's right, Saint Pete. That's right, cause that's right, Saint Pete for short. Ooh, look at that map. I bet you that's. I bet you that's a pretty nice place to live. I would like to live somewhere in the outskirts of Tampa. Cause I don't think Tampa would. Well, never mind. Any part of Florida can really be open to a hurricane eventually. And so, pretty much everywhere in the South. But yeah, that's nice down there. That's one of my favorite beaches is down there is uh, Sarasota. That's one of my favorite beaches in America. Uh, I remember going there. I was probably a kid, 10, 15 years old. Well, probably like a t like 10. Uh, I have a grandmother that was down there at the time when, when I was growing up in Georgia. We drove down there. And I just remember the beach of Sarasota just amazing. Amazing, super soft, just not a not not a blemish in the sand. You could just scoop it up and just let it go through your hands, and it's like the finest mist. <laughs> um, very pretty down there in the Gulf. I'd like to live down there. Just never got down there when I was really heavy on heavy on trucking, like all the time trucking, because we know how Florida. I wanted to live somewhere strategically to freight. And I do so within 300 miles. I got like a ton of major cities. Within a, within 100 miles, I got a good range of cities. And within 150 mile, uh, within 175 miles, I got another good range of cities. Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. Let me see here. Let's look at another load or two, and I'm going to go ahead and close this episode up. Uh, yeah, I didn't really talk much about the actual low board today because I've had a lot going on with um, getting my store open. But it's open! Bing, bing, bing! Very happy about that because that allows me to close one end of my journey and open up another end of, I mean, open up another, uh, uh, the next part of my journey. Because <clears throat> that book of mine is, um, is real, it's authentic. Took me, took me a long time. Quite, quite, quite a while. Well, definitely a long time to gather all the information and, and to be, to be able to do what I did with it. But, uh, but also to actually physically just write it and just sit here in silence and just recall as much as I can. Just recall, 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 and also figure out how to structure the book in the way where you can learn in order, so things aren't out of place. So you're not like learning about something that's too complicated for what step that you're on. So, you know, this whole process of building it, like, how would I explain it to you if we were in person and we had all night to talk about it? And really, this book of mine is literally like me and you having a conversation, but I, I don't stop talking for, like, two weeks straight. <laughs> like, a week or two straight. So, um, definitely, y'all let me know. Um, for everybody who's already watching, uh, if you want to do it, a certain a certain city trailer type um yeah city trailer type or what not uh, 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 did, did I come out clear or what not just uh leave it down in the comments or you can respond over on my community board because I'm liking YouTube as a hangout spot so um using that community board now and stuff like that uh, is what I'm doing and I'll do it in the next show because uh, soon here probably about in the next two two to four weeks I'll be going back on the road I need to do some stuff with my truck and get it back ready for the road something about the winter time happened where I had a little crack in my in, in my windshield that I've had for like four years but it's been really little like smaller than the size of a uh, about the size of a uh, like uh, like uh, like smaller than a quarter. It's probably about the size of a nickel. But I came outside about 
a week or so and noticed that the cold weather that we had it froze just enough and it made the crack um go like and i was like jeez i didn't even man i tell you dang and i went and touched it like this and it just, it just kept on spreading so i'm like uh, yeah i'm probably gonna have to actually i am gonna have to probably change it so i'll be doing that go drive into town to glass store put the glass in because i need february is my month where i renew everything so february this is my month where i'll be uh i need to get another dot inspection which is i'm going to need a good windshield here in louisiana and uh go renew my irp stuff like that but i'm thinking about getting a gopro camera and i will uh still keep doing these uploads on thursdays why not uh it's just um something that it's pretty pretty easy for me to do and it's just just more content keeps it up and going but uh yeah i'm thinking about picking up a gopro camera before i leave out or something like that or even like setting up in a way where because when i'm on the road before i open my store like i'm really like locked into to doing my deals into my work so we'll see but i may even be able to make productions out of uh three dollars a mile to go to arizona that's a good load look at that 334 a mile bennett and bennett's gonna pay good quick uh elkhart indiana to west memphis arkansas forty-five thousand pounds so yeah yeah um but yeah so even a production of something like uh live uh like doing my loads um still screenshotting it because usually when i'm on the road i'm looking i'm using my phone or my tablet i don't even pull my laptop out but i'll pull my laptop out and just book my load like this depending on the situation because like a lot of times too i'm already pre-booked like a day or two in advance so i'm not even really doing live stuff so we'll see you know get a little gopro camera they're like 300 bucks now or something two or 300 bucks take it with me strap down some loads do some different things maybe get some shots driving for, for the times when i'm not um at home running the store yep and doing stuff like this so that's it for episode nine i want to encourage you to go check out my trucking trade if you haven't already uh, because my store is open, I put a lot of work in getting my store up and running and automated where every email gets delivered and everything's easy and accessible. Uh, uh, as always, I want to thank you for riding on through the year 2021 with me. Y'all be safe, careful, profitable. See you next week. I do have an Instagram page. I'm posting on that now. Uh, at Andrews underscore method and that is all you guys be well be safe be profitable be happy and understand there's more to life than just making money but money is one of those things that makes all those other things possible so do focus on your money focus on saving it focus on making it last focus on multiplying it focus on getting more of it so that way the more you put the money up the more you can focus on just listening to yourself and to your soul and finding out what it is that what why you're here on earth and what's your per what, 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 what is what is your going to fulfill you the most like what do you what do you think your purpose is like what is what is what is it that you're co accomplishing within yourself and find that happiness and find that peace and then start to have an amazing life and then you start to rub off on others and other people start having amazing lives and it's all like that so but in a sense it takes money i mean you can still be a great person and have a great life without money but money there's like different um i read it before in a book uh brass knuckle finance he, he i think he called it the seven pillars of success and finance is just one of them but I would almost go to say that finance is not even really a pillar of success. It's more like a foundation because a lot of these other successes depend on having financial floor. Uh, whether it's freedom of time, happiness, freedom of, uh, of, of, of um, I mean, um, you know, the quality of company of the people you have around you. 
uh, all these different elements of success is uh, like freedom of time. That's not going to happen unless you really have money or unless you just go completely off the grid. And um, maybe the people that you have around you, well, <laughs> you know how that goes. Usually when there's people around each other and nobody's making money, it tends to manifest in different ways where maybe you would enjoy being around other other energies and people but you wouldn't know because the finance part wasn't done because once you start getting finances order you start going different places and doing different things maybe you like neo soul and poetry and jazz and stuff so you start hanging out at those places and you realize there's a lot of people just like you but it was the finance that had to be in order so that's the way that's the way I see money like I'm not really much addicted to money or nothing like that but I understand that money is is like it, like I was just saying the foundation but money is also the catalyst money is money is potential power but if you're a good person and you have good intent then of course money is just going to be good potential power for you so that's why I, I like to allow I like to dig pathways to allow money to come to me and dig pathways where I can go get money myself so that way I can just allow that good potential power to accumulate and go from there and we each do this as individuals and then we start to see a um, we start to see a more I think ple uh, a more enjoyable human experience uh, with finances because you, when for, for for most people uh, having having the necessities in life is going to make them a lot more uh, content and less uh, it's going. It, it's going to make this person more. More. It's going to more likely to incline this person to be less aggressive, because they got what they need: roof, clothing, food, shelter for them and their kids. Right. And when those necessities are covered, and you can reach reach a little bit more, and start buying. You know, start bringing in things you want. Um. Then. Yeah. So it starts to calm down, but but a lot. I think a lot of the issues that we see with violence and um, just different unfortunate things that happen too fast. A lot of it comes from you could look at it. It was because the financial floor was not laid, the finance was not in order, and money became a desperation. Then fast stuff starts happening because of that, or people get involved in having you know certain habits that 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 distract them from the reality that they never did get the money you got to get the money it's simple i said all that to say this you got to get the money you got to get the money but don't let the money get you right just uh put a number in your head figure out how much you want and decide that you're going to get it and just walk walk run when you can jump when you can listen figure it out and walk to your money. That's what faith is. And it's a very important part of the manifestation process. Yep. So keep your thoughts good. And I'll see you on episode 10. Right? Let me pull this up. Am I still recording? Golly. 43 minutes. I do this every time, don't I? I do this every time. I better go. I better go. I'll see you on the next one. Uh, Truckstop.com. Episode 9. That's it.